Hey guys, Marshall Cycliff here doing another video for our friends at MTGO Academy. And uh, you can notice right off the bat, this is not Return to Ravnica. We are in a Cube single elimination event. I'm really excited. Cube is back right when you just start to get sick enough of Return to Ravnica that you're like, you know, can I really do yet another draft? You boom, you get Cube. And we have a heck of a pack here. We have... Two of the best cards that the game has ever seen. Ancestral Recall, by many cons considered by many to be just the best card ever. And Jace the Mind Sculptor, you know, honestly, also considered by many to be the best card ever. Um, I kind of want to just take Ancestral because it's just cheaper and, and awesome and sweet, and it goes in a lot more decks, and it's Ancestral Recall, and it's never been on Magic Online, so why don't we just take it? But... I actually think I'd rather have Jace. Like, the continued advantage that you get off of Jace and the sort of build-around ability is just amazing. But Ancestral is Ancestral, and we're just going to take it. Heck with it. All right. Uh, Elspeth Knight, Knight Errant is a nice open, but I really like Vidalkin Shackles a lot. Uh, there's also a Treachery, which is really fantastic. Gideon's pretty good, too. Scrollack is fine. Sheldock Isle is really underrated and, and sweet as well. And Dark Confidant is obviously uh, sweet, too. Um, to me, it comes down to like Treachery, Elspeth, or Vidalkin Shackles, and I'm just going to take the Shackles. We're already in blue, and uh, maybe we can just make this this blue deck work here. All right, so what do we have? We have a Ravages of War, so that's a pretty good one, although it doesn't really go with what we're doing here. We want mana for this. Uh, this doesn't care. This is just mono awesome. Um, Plow Under could be a thing that we do. We can go into white. We could pick up like an Exalted Angel. It's a fine value creature. It's not that great. We could just stay blue. And do a counter spell. I like it better than mana leak when you're in blue. Even though it is a little harder to cast, just being able to say no, sir, at any point is uh, is definitely good. Frantic search. No, we, we don't want to be frantic search. And let's just take counter spell here, I think. I kind of want to just stay in blue. It helps our shackles and, and can kind of guide us along that route. All right, so the blue is now gone. Uh, there's a precursor golem, which we could take. You know, as a card that just kind of goes into any deck. Uh, Smokestack doesn't seem to be the way we want to go here, I don't think. Same with Stupor. Blade Splicer is a card we could take. We could be blue-white, like, control. This is a, an efficient creature that can beat down and block well, um, too. Or we could even go into into green and go for a, a Fauna Shaman here. Fauna Shaman's pretty sweet. It can do some really neat things. We don't have any creatures yet. I don't know how creature-based we're going to be, though. I'm going to take the Blade Splicer here. I don't like this card a lot, but I think I think we're, we might be able to pick up some sweet white cards, so let's try it out. Um, all right, this next pack looks pretty bad. There's not a whole lot going on here. The Abyss is kind of interesting. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, destroy target non-artifact creature that player controls of his or her choice. It can't be regenerated. Kind of weird. It, it actually targets. doesn't make them sack it. We could take that. That could be interesting. It's a reasonable control card when you're playing against a bunch of uh, good stuff. There's also an Underground Sea and an Elspeth Terrell here, though, that definitely have my attention. Now let's try the Abyss out. I've never actually played it uh, in online. I've played it in <clears throat> offline cubes, and it was fine. Ooh, man. Lots of good stuff here. Jeez, there's a Reanimate, a Cryptic Command, even Maze of Ith is good. The Void is pretty good here, too. There's also two Signets. I wouldn't mind having one of these. Apocrysite's interesting in our deck because it's immune to the Abyss, but I'm just going to take Cryptic here. I like these things, but Cryptic is just too powerful, especially since we've leaned so hard into blue already. Uh, Hero of Bladehold, Path to Exile, Leon and Reddick Water, even a Masticore. I think I just want the Path here. Hero's sweet, you know, another compact attacking package, which is nice. Um, ex exploration can be totally ridiculous as well. I don't mind Relic Water, but it's okay. I don't really feel like trying to do, like, Storm stuff. We don't really have the deck for it. We're very controlling here. Uh, I think I'm just going to take a Path. We'll figure out a win condition later. Uh, Fire Main Angel is not a card that I'm interested in at all. Ancient Tomb is interesting to me. Boros Garrison is interesting, and Aeon Chronicler. I think I'm just going to take the Chronicler. I don't love the card, but I, I kind of feel like drawing a bunch of cards. That sounds fine to me. Nether Void. What does this one do? Whenever a player casts a spell, can on that spell unless this player... <laughs> so that's 
that's real fun. We could just take this. I mean, th these other cards aren't great anyway. Chroma's Vengeance is fine, but I don't really like it that much. Wake Thrasher is okay, but it doesn't seem to go in our deck very well. Let's take another Void. I don't know that we're going to run it, but maybe. Wow, all right. Here's the Moat. What do we take over Moat? Counterspell? Maybe I just miss it because of the artwork. That's kind of weird. Oh, no, we took Shackles over it. I didn't even see it, though, but we're just going to take it now. <laughs> we're never getting attacked this game. We actually need like a mill artifact now. We need a way to like just get ahead on the mill, the mill race, which is kind of funny. Shriek Maw's awesome. Uh, another vo or the abyss doesn't target non. Yeah, it, it, it does hit black creatures. Um, Exalted Angel is a card I like quite a bit, and then we could just take a Boiler Works for that. I'm gonna take the Shriek Maw. Looks like we might be Esper here. I don't think Shriek Maw is like great here, but I I don't think we're actually gonna have a creature based win condition here. We are probably going to end up with the Wrath Effect of some sort and a few other cheap draw and disruption spells, and we're going to need to find a way to actually finish off our opponent at some point here. I'm not really sure how we're going to do it. <laughs> so sick. New artwork is lame, though. Jeez, what is he doing? I like the other one better. It's it's a it's a riff on the old one. You can see the buildings in the back, and it's the same guy that was in the front, but the new one's way cooler. All right, Fire Spout, Faithless Looting, Sarcomancy. I guess I'll take a Shaman now, but I don't think we're going to play it. Uh, this is interesting. We can get dudes back over and over again, or we can just Ratchet Bomb them. And yeah, we'll go for a Stronghold. I don't know that we're going to play it, but we might. If there's some if there's some reason, so you can play one in a black to tap it to put creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. So if you have stuff that has enter the battlefield effects that you like, you can do it. Wow, void still here. Yeah, I guess I'm just going to take the apocrysite since it does keep coming back over and over, and it gets around the void or the abyss. I mean, this deck is kind of interesting so far. It doesn't really know where it's going. Now yeah, we got mind's desire anyway. I don't think we want it, though. It's a sweet card, but it requires you to be pretty focused. You can't just throw it in your blue deck and expect to get good stuff out of it. All right, so what do we open here? Well, we open another piece of power with a time twister. We also open Venser Opposition Wrath, Mishra's Workshop, which is pretty insane. We've got an Apocrysite and a Shackles right now. We don't have that many other artifacts, but, I mean, th this card is just insane. Yes, it is a land that comes into play untapped and taps for three colorless mana. Sure, you can only play, art play artifacts with it, but still, that's just off the charts cool. Um, Into the Royal, yeah, we might get that back or whatever. So Opposition is a card I like a lot, but we don't have enough creatures, and we probably don't plan on having enough creatures to make that work. We could take Venser. Venser's good. We could take Wrath. We, we want a Wrath for the deck, but I don't think we need to take it right here. There's also a Terminus. I bet you we get one of these back. Time Twister. We could take. It's, it's a draw seven. I've never actually played with Time Twister, so that could be interesting. Or we could take Workshop and like just hit turn turn one Shackles, which doesn't actually do anything. Um, let's just try Time Twister. I mean, hey, we already got an Ancestral. We might as well go for more power here, right? All right, now we open an On Color Mox as well. That seems pretty sweet. There's some other decent cards in this pack, too. There's a Jace Belair, and there's a really powerful card with Channel. There's a Sword, although it's probably the worst Sword, but it's still pretty good. But I'm just going to take the Mox Sapphire because, hey, if we have three pieces of Power 9, that's better than two, right? <laughs> uh, let's see. Damnation, Thran Dynamo, Tezzeret. Tezzeret's interesting. He could win us the game. I don't know that I really want to play blue-black. Kind of like the blue-white thing going on a little better with a couple of black cards, but I guess we could still just keep that splash going. There's also a Thran Dynamo if we want to get to big stuff. Loom Surgeon's kind of interesting, but not what we want. All's Dust, we kind of don't want that played against us. If we get this kind of thing going, then All's Dust is one of the cards that can kind of get him out of it. I guess I'll go for Tezzeret here, though. I've always loved that card. Ooh, some good blue stuff here. Also a white card. Oh, man, some really good stuff here. All right, so we've got a Control Magic, a Venser, and a Sower. So a Sower is a lot like a Control Magic. It's just harder to get rid of, but it also attacks and blocks and everything. It's a creature itself. Uh, I think I'd prefer Control Magic here than Sower. 
It's just less fragile. And if we're going to steal something, let's just take it. Otherwise, we can take Venser, which I like quite a bit. I do I do enjoy a Venser. He, I love bouncing stuff, and he does a good job with that. He can even bounce spells. But I think I am just going to take the control magic here, actually. Yeah, let's go for that. Stealing their dudes is, is still surprisingly great. Drag Manglers in the cube? That looks weird. Um, Worn Power Stone seems to be the pick here. There's also a Golgari Signet, which is a little cheaper, but Worn Power Stone gets you more mana slower, but it gets you more mana, and I like that. So I'm going to take the Worn Power Stone. Whoa. Some interesting stuff. Wow, Eureka's in the cube? <laughs> Look at that. It's like playing chicken. Green seems to be wide open here. I mean, this is a great card for green. Just insane. This is obviously amazing, too, and so is Master of the Wild Hunt's pretty good, too. Um, I think I'm just going to take Tangle Wire, though. Yeah, I'm just going to take a Tangle Wire. I like just locking them down. Um, not much for us here. There's no blue cards left. There's only one black card, which we're not going to run. There is a black-white that we could run here. It's also an artifact creature, so it gets around the Abyss. I still just want to rank, I just want a win condition that'll get us there. We can also just take an Enlightened Tutor, which isn't a great card, but it can dig us for our Moat, our Control Magic, our Nether Void, our Abyss, any of our Tangle Wires, Shackles. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take that. I don't love those tutors, but when you have stuff like what we have here, that seems pretty good. Ooh, Show and Tell is interesting. It's not what we want, though. I don't think we really want any of these. Maybe if I Rexian Arena. Sure. I don't think we're going to run it, but we might. It'll kill us. <laughs> Unless we have some inevitable win condition. I kind of like how we have some artifacts going here with Tezzeret, though. Makes it Definitely makes it better. All right, so Venser came back. The Wrath didn't, but Terminus did. Time Spiral's interesting, but we have a friggin' Time Twister, which basically does the same thing, except for doesn't untap your lands, which obviously matters, but it's still not as good. Let, let's take Venser. I think Venser, if, if we can... If we can control the, the ground, you know, like they can't attack us or whatever, and we stick Venser, then I think he's a pretty good win condition. Once we emblem him up, we can just uh, start getting rid of all of their permanents, and then we can get rid of whatever we need to get rid of and start attacking. Um, I like Watery Grave here. I can't believe Channel's still in this pack, but I guess that's what you get. Thran Dynamo, Gloom Surgeon, or an Aulus Dust? I don't want the Surgeon. I'm considering the Thran Dynamo, although we don't really have a whole lot to do with all this awesome extra mana that we have. I mean, you can usually find something, but all his dust might be the pick just because it wipes out so much of our stuff. I'm still just going to take Thran Dynamo, I think. We, we do have Counterspell and, and the like. Call me of Ancient Law, sack it, destroy. All right, so it's just Keening Apparition. Yeah, we're running both of these colors. Let's take a Basilica. Yeah, I still don't know how we're going to win yet. We'll find a way. What, I, I I really want some cards down here, though. Like, just having one counter spell and, like, one path isn't really make me too happy. I want to get in there and, and uh, you know, get a bunch of efficient cards going to support. Because we seem to have a pretty sweet late game going. I'm taking Necromancy. We're not going to... Oh, wait, Necromancy is the one I think it is? Oh, yeah, Necromancy can be good. This can get stuff from their graveyard. Yeah, that's just way too much text. But basically, it's just an enchantment that is a reanimation effect it gets the card back you can cast it as at, at instant speed yes an instant speed enchantment <laughs> but if you do you get the creature back but only until end of turn also if they ever blow up necromancy then you're, you have to sacrifice the creature too juicy apprentice sure man so we've got ancestral recall a mox and we've also got time twister but i'm not I'm not fully sold that time twister is really that amazing like, I don't think we're going to be just, like, dumping our hand or whatever. I don't think we want that one, but maybe. This deck seems okay. I don't really know what it does yet. We'll find out soon. Batter Skull. I like Batter Skull. Let's see what else is in this pack here. Oh, there's a Bribery. That can get it very interesting against certain decks, especially when there's a lot of these ramp decks running around. And they and they just want to get you with a with some like Eldrazi and you can just steal it. One downside to bribery though is that it doesn't cast the spell. So like if it is an Eldrazi, you don't get the 
the ability that, you know, like Ulamog doesn't blow up a permanent, you get to draw far, four cards with Coast Luck and you don't get the extra turn, but it usually doesn't matter. The card's just still so awesome. I think I'm just going to take Batter Skull here, though. Yeah, I like it better than these other cards. I got to make sure I don't. They, they change around some of the art. I don't want to miss something, but. Garrick Wildspeaker, no. Sylvan Library, that's one of my favorites here. Aha! I knew I was taking those Thran Dynamos for some reason. Crucible would be sweet too, but let's take Upheaval. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. We've got Worn Power Stone, Thran Dynamo, and a Mox for acceleration and, you know, that, that work well with it. But we really would like a, a Signet or two to make it work. And I would like a Wrath. I never did get a Wrath. Maybe I should have just taken that Wrath. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to play this one or not. Or excuse me, if I'm going to play this one or not. Makes the game go long, which is generally a good thing for us. All right, so what do we have? Oh, man, Library of Alexandria. <laughs> How did this get to me? I mean, there's some really good stuff that I'd love to have in my deck here. Don't get me wrong. The Aqueduct, the Signet, Anime Dead. Heck, I'd play a Lingering Souls. I'd play either of these guys. I'd even play this. Like, I'd play a Baleful Strix or a Moldrifter. Like, I'd play three quarters of the cards in this pack, but I'm not passing this one. Sick. <laughs> we got we got a library. Card's awesome. All right, now we see why all these cards suck. What does a Johnny do again? We can make a bunch of cats. Plus one, put a plus one plus one counter on top on target creature. That doesn't do anything. So the so basically we're just we're just trying to get him up to eight so we can ultimate him in this deck. That doesn't seem that good. Sphinx is awesome. Prime Titan is ridiculous, of course. We could just take a Kozilek. We do have a bunch of ramp. Like, it gives us a, a win condition that we wanted. I could also just take a Journey just to take out something early. We still don't have that Wrath effect. I really like Consecrated Sphinx quite a bit. But, I mean, Kozilek is Kozilek. Hmm. This is actually interesting. If we take Kozilek, we've got Thran Dynamo, Worn Power Stone, a few other, and we have just like things that take a lot of time to get to. I think we could actually just cast him. Yeah, I'm going to take him. He's just super powerful, too. Ooh, there's a Metal Worker, a Chromox. Brainstorm's just okay. Yeah, this, this pack's not great for us. Duress is probably one of the better cards. We could also take the Metal Worker, though. This can power stuff out. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven-ish artifacts that we might run. Yeah, let's take Metal Worker. Plus Tezzeret can find him. Oh man, Grim Monolith? Yes, sir. Sign me up. There's some really good stuff in this pack too. Vindicate I'd like quite a bit. But we're just going to run the old Grim Monolith because that's exactly the card that we want for this deck. It gets us to this. It helps a lot out with this. We can search for it with this. Hmm, this deck is getting interesting. Hmm. Emrakul, you say? Yeah, let's do that. I think we can just make 15 mana eventually. Like, if our deck ends up being as controlling as we want it to be, then I think we're just going to get to that much mana. Like, we've got enough ramp. And if we don't get to that much mana, we have ways to win way before that. This would be funny if we hard cast Emrakul. I don't know if we have enough tools to keep us alive long enough to do that, but we might. Moat's a big one. Moat's huge. Moat, Moat locks down the board in a really big way. Like, they have to have an answer for Moat pretty quickly, <clears throat> or else it's just like we get so much time to just do whatever we want. I love this card. I do not like that art, though. Oh, man, the old art is sweet, too. Why are they changing so much of the art? I kind of like it when they do that, but then they make some some changes that I'm just like, why, why do we do that? What's going on here? This makes sense. He's fallen into the abyss. Although it says in the flavor text that it's a river. Oh, well. Uh, there's a signet. There's also a chancery. There's another signet and a lotus Bloom. Lotus Bloom's interesting, but I think I'm just going to go for a Signet, and I'm going to take the one that at least shares one color with us, I suppose, because I don't have any red cards. Signets are really good with Upheaval, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to pick that up, honestly. This would be funny. I think I want to just leave this in in case somebody else feels like playing it, though. 
I'll take Silent Spectre. Eh, yeah, I'm going to take Silent Spectre. I actually like it. Wait, what does this do? Oh, Catastrophe. Lands are all creatures? Yeah, sure. I wanted a Wrath. That counts. Primeval. Uh, this one blows up an enchantment, so I'm just going to take it. I don't want people blowing up my good enchantments. Wow. Wow. Man, super late. Anime dead this late is sick. I don't think that we can run it, though. We just don't We don't have anything to really get back, so I'm going to be pretty happy just to pick up a signet here. Jeez. Okay. Um. I guess, did I take the green signet? I did. I mean, why not? Like, I don't, I'm not going to run a Johnny. He doesn't do anything. Pulse is a pretty easy pickup, even though we can run Liliana or Etched. Pulse hits, like, key stuff that we have, though. Maybe I'm just a Planeswalker deck with, like, Liliana. I'll, I'll just cack the Pulse here. I don't think we want Liliana that bad anyway. Um, neither of these are relevant. This deck is weird. This is going to be funny. We're Esper. I don't know if I'm going to run Vraska. I kind of want to. I kind of like just shields, shields up here with, like, you know, the stuff on the ground. Like this card mainly, you know, which we have sort of pseudo two copies of. And then we just, if it if it sticks, or if we can protect it, then we can just live for a really long time until we get to the point where we can start casting just ridiculous stuff. So let's see what we have. I'm not going to play Jushi. Hmm. I don't know if I play this one or not. I think I do, though. These are all in... That's not, this is, all right, yeah, Catastrophe Moat, probably not Blade Splicer, but maybe, and Path is in. This is definitely a control deck, a control ramp deck. Uh, Nether Void, I don't know if we're going to run Nether Void, I just have no idea, to be honest. I mean, this seems good for us, right? We want, we, we'll have more mana than they will. We can ramp this thing out and just stall the game forever. I kind of like it. I think I'm going to try it. I'm feeling like a risk taker today, I think. All right, so Tyna. Yes, all of these are coming in. Signets, Monoliths, Apocrysite, yes. <laughs> yes, Emrakul, get in the deck. And then we've got all of these. Um, I don't think we're going to run that one, but we've got all of these to run as well. That puts us at 28 playables uh, with six creatures. We don't really need creatures. Those are going to come later. This is also a creature that doesn't really count as a creature. Um, we can also throw Vrask in if we want. Although we don't really have a reliable way to do that, so I don't know that we want to do that. And do we want Time Twister? Do we need a draw seven? Like, I, I just envisioned a scenario where we're like, turn one library, we're drawing cards, we're always at seven, and we don't want to do this because we're just going to fill up our opponent's hand or something. I might be way off with that, I just don't really know. Apocrysite is an artifact, so we kind of want that. Got a bunch of ramp here, so we definitely need stuff to cast. Uh, I'd like to have, actually. I wonder if I should have just taken that Liliana. That card's pretty good. You know, it can search stuff up for you and whatnot. This is just a land, so this goes here. Tutor I like a lot. We've got tons of different stuff that we can tutor for. Uh, we've got two huge finishers that we can eventually, hopefully, cast. I kind of like playing this. I'm, I'm really curious to see how it goes. And then this seems good too. Um, Shriek Maw, we can just evoke it. Like that's fine. And Chronicler's a, a card draw engine. Uh, Batter Skull's just Batter Skull. Like it'll just keep us alive. Uh, Metal Worker. So let's look at the, the creatures that we have that die to the Abyss. Shriek Maw, Emrakul, and Kozilek all die to it. But we, we just draw them again eventually. Yeah, so those all die to it. Chronicler dies to it, but it has another role in the deck, so that's not as relevant. Metalworker doesn't. Apocrysite doesn't. That's it. So just these ones. But our bombs do die to it, so we could definitely set ourselves up where we're going to have a really hard time winning because of this card. Like, if we can't... Like, I guess we'll just eventually upheaval it and then just recast this guy or something. Because if we, if we ever resolve an upheaval, we're going to be... We're going to be, like, way, way, way ahead because we've got so much mana. Man, Ancestral is going to be insane in this deck, too. Yeah, I'm going to leave Time Twister in the board. 
Um, we're obviously going to run the library, though. That's one of my favorite cards. I really wish they didn't change the art, although I have to say this picture is pretty sweet. But, man, the, the old, like, oh, man, I think if there's, like, one one card in real life that I don't own that I'd really like to, I think it's a library, like a Arabian Nights library. Oh, man. All right, so let's see what we're doing here, though. Um, six creatures. Yeah, whatever. I don't even care. Um, catastrophe, again, seems good. We can destroy all lands, which is interesting because we might just have mana enough to cast stuff without lands. So what are we cutting? We're at 27 here. I think we can get away with fewer lands, though. Um, we're definitely replacing this as just a straight land, so there's that. And then we've got two signets, a monolith, a worn power stone, a metal worker, a Thran dynamo. So we've got like a lot of ways down here to make mana. I wonder if we even need the full 17, you know, quote, lands and that. I think we could probably get away with 16 even. We still need to make cuts here, though. I want to keep path. Do, what does this really do anything that we want? I mean, it's big. It, like, eventually gets there, right? I don't know. I know I want this. I know I want all these ramp spells. I know I want shackles and this. I think I want tangle wire. I mean, we can search it up with, with Tezzeret. Plus, how many art artifacts do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have ten. So we can actually, if we get all of our artifacts down and ultimate Tezzeret, then it's exactly lethal. So we always have that win condition, even if the board's completely locked up. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I guess we could cut Chronicler. No, how can we do that? He's one of our huge draw engines and he's... See, because one of the things that I always get nervous about when we run this many mana sources is running out of gas, right? The old ramp into nothing. But the fact like when we have Aeon Chronicler and Ancestral Recall... And then things to go towards like catastrophe and upheaval, like it makes it so that we can actually just stay alive or that we can actually just keep just keep hitting gas, you know, and that's really what we want to do here. Um, I like all these cards, I guess I'm still I'm still really not sure about Nether Void, but I just want to try it. Like, I feel like if we go turn three Nether Void or turn two Nether Void. What happens? Turn three Nether Void. They can't cast anything. Like, they just can't cast anything forever. It just makes the game go super long. That seems like what we'd want. We're eventually going to have more mana than they are. If we make this a 7-drop, that's fine. And just sitting there and drawing a bunch of cards seems really good to me. Yeah, I'm going to try that one out. And I like the Abyss as well. We only have one Wrath effect. Maybe I just cut the Catastrophe and just hope that we just hit the Abyss every time. Because we have the Abyss and Moat, which are both kind of, you know, keep their creatures down type effects. Makes me a little nervous, but yeah. Four, eight, nine, ten. I could still cut Apocrisite. I could also cut Emrakul, but that just seems awesome. I don't know that we need two of these, though. Like, wh why would we need two? Like, isn't he just as good? Like, don't we just not need Emrakul? I mean, I... I kind of want to run him just because it's awesome, but I don't actually think we need him. So I think I'm going to leave him in the board for the, for the moment here. And we need to make at least one more cut. Venser seems really good. Again, Shriekma? Yeah, we can cut Shriekma. Shriekma is not really doing much here anyway. I think this is good right here. And then I think we jam these in there, and then we add lands. And it wants to do seven deuce deuce. And we've got, let's see here, convert mana cost. So we've got blue. So we have one colorless land, but this makes black, white. Oh, we don't want that one. So that's probably going to be, yeah, we want plenty of blue. That's for sure. Black is our secondary color and then white, but we have white and black. So we have both of those represented. So maybe it goes like this. By the way, sick. Uh, that's so awesome that they made those lands like that. Okay, so what if what if our deck is this? Four creatures, so a finisher, a card draw, kind of a creature. Uh, what's our other creature? Oh, uh, a ramp guy and sort of inevitable can't die to the thing. This way, we're like basically abyss proof besides Kozilek, which is admittedly very awkward. <laughs> But I think that we can work around it just fine. 
we can also bounce it. Like we can cryptic bounce the abyss when we finally get Kozilek down and it, it will have done its job like many times over. This seems fun. Yeah, let's do this. I have no idea if this is going to work, but I'll see you guys in the first round. 